to see that it is possible to use the money put in the government hands to work for the people. The government that believes that the poor will no, not only breathe, live, enjoy. Ah, good morning. Good morning. Very senior officers, distinguished invited guests, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. It is my singular honor and privilege to announce the arrival. You are most welcome, sir. Special guest of honor, sir, very senior, sir, distinguished invited guest, ladies and gentlemen. Right now, the parade commander is marching smartly to invite the review of sir, for the inspection of today's parade. Year 2024, I'm forcing celebration and remembrance of the parade for both. 13 officers, 149 soldiers of parade. 20 details of prayer ready for each virtual. Your Excellency. The Reign of Sir has just granted the permission of the parade commander and will now proceed to inspect the parade. While the Reign of Sir is inspecting the parade, please allow Mr. Governor alone to do this. He said this. Officially marked the level of the Welcome to those that are here for this event. Thank you, Mr. Governor. Flag and what at the firing party takes post at the Senator. One second. In the state when you don't have for the replaying ceremony. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Governor.
Thank you, sir. Thank you, Thank you all the students.
many things in the black country in Nigeria. I hope that this piece will continue to be ready to the heart of mind of all our people. The Nigerian police, the civil defense, the DSS, and all those involved in securing us. I appreciate also those who are not usually categorized under the armed forces, in the narrower definition of it, but who work tirelessly to secure our state and secure our nation. My address this morning, this particular auspicious occasion, it's a very short, direct one. And first is to appreciate all of you for showing up today. And for those who are not here, if you spare a moment of silence, a moment to reflect on the import of today's event. Today, we've come to celebrate what is referred to, or what we call, the Armed Forces Remembrance Day. It is a day that we, yesterday, we had a church service, at which we prayed for the peaceful repose of the souls of all those who fought gallantly to secure our land. And as well, prayed for the life commitment, patriotism of those who are still in service, that God will give them the courage, the commitment, and life and health to continue to serve our fatherland as they have sworn and taken oath to do so. I say it is a double barrel event. One is to, um, if you like, celebrate those who have gone, and at the same time, celebrate the living. We remember all those who fought to maintain the inter territorial integrity of our nation, who have gone on peacekeeping missions all over Africa and the world, who fought during the Civil War that ended in January 1970, and I want to believe that the choice of this date it's quite auspicious, 15th of January, to be able to signal that. And we want to use this opportunity as well to be able to pray that having gone through that horrendous civil war, today, as we remember all those who died in the course of service, we remember that particular incident, and as a nation, we should be able to say, never again never again that this country remains united remains strong as the greatest black power on earth that never again but we pay glowing tribute to our heroes who died in the course of service we also remember their i think they are mostly men the widows and the widowers and at this particular moment, the legions and all those who retired from active service, may your days continue to be long, may you continue to have long life, healthy life. You spend much of your productive age in the service of our nation. We appreciate you. We thank you. But I want to especially use this opportunity to appreciate all the men and women in uniform who are serving here today in Anambra State. Those who have served, especially since I assumed office as the Chief Servant of the State on March 
17, 2022. We've fought together, we've battled together, we've bonded together, fighting a common enemy. The criminals who are in the bush, the criminals who come under various guises, but their mission is one big lucrative criminality that's who they are that's what they are about there are criminals in the bush involved in kidnapping involved in maiming and killing of innocent and Anambra and residents the armed forces the army the police the navy the air force civil defense the DSS and all the other armed forces, including, and I will not fail to remember or to mention, our gallant men of the vigilante services who are also fighting alongside uh, members of the armed forces. Some of them as well have paid the supreme sacrifice. But I am happy and commend you today while I commend you, I especially want to say that due to your combined efforts for gallantry, your professionalism and commitment, today the eight local governments that were totally under siege when we arrived here, hundreds of camps all over in all our bushes and forests, I think it is fair to say with every sense of modesty that the difference between then and now is like the difference between day and night. We want to thank you all as you continue to devote your time and effort to the service of our state. Anamra today is certainly one of the safest states in Nigeria, if not indeed the safest state. The Christmas season was an eloquent testimonial to that. And where the Anambra had an unprecedented mass return. In all communities and villages, there were celebrations. And people, even Oko, that had, I think, three or four camps. In those days, you dared not cross there. Even Oko had a mass return during this Christmas. It is a testament to the change times. And so, we are here to celebrate our armed forces. Several of you, several falling heroes, may their souls have eternal rest. May their souls rest in peace. But we will never forget. We will never take your sacrifices and commitment for granted. We will remember and we will do whatever we can to support the widows and widowers, to support members of the Legion, pledge their support to the members, to serving members of the armed forces as you continue to toil day and night. Every day you put your lives on the line so that the rest of us can sleep. We will never take that sacrifice for granted. And just be rest assured that Anam State government under my leadership has your back. We will continue to provide whatever support that we can, that we continue to fight to keep this state safe, safe, and have the law, security law and order properly and firmly established here as the foundation for every society. And that leads me to make a third but very important point. All over Nigeria today, there are insurgents all over, kidnappers, you know, miscreants, criminals who have taken laws into their hands. But without security law and order, there can't be any society. We can't build the Nigeria of our dream without, first of all, firmly taking grip of security law and order. And here in Anambra, I've commended our members, the armed forces, I also want to remember the members 
of the State House of Assembly. You make the laws for order, for law and order. Our judiciary, our judges, our magistrates, we're all working tirelessly very hard to ensure that those who misbehave are called to book and that you help to interpret our laws and help to ensure law and order. And for those who are in the streets, be they members of the SARS, the vigilante, the members of the armed forces who work tirelessly, we'll continue to appreciate you. But we must always stress the fact and remind ourselves as ordinary citizens that we all have a duty. The duty of ensuring security, law, and order. It's not just the duty of the armed forces. It is the duty of all. Everyone has a role to play. When we came in here, we launched the program of if you see something, say something. Everyone has a role to play. Whether it is the intel, the criminals in the bush, these guys who are masquerading and under all manner of names, they are not unknown gunmen, they are known, they are known criminals. They have parents, they have fathers, they have mothers, they have sisters, they have brothers, they have relations, they come from villages, they come from our communities, they are our friends. Send your intelligence, send intel, give us the information, and the arm for the members of our security team will take them out so that the rest of us can have peace. We cannot have a society where people pick and choose which laws that they should obey. When a law is lawfully passed by the lawful authority, everyone in a democracy, everyone in a decent society, everyone in a civilized society is bound by that law. In a society where people can pick and choose which laws they would obey, which ones they would discard, and which ones they think they don't like, that will be a society that will be defined by nothing but anarchy. We'll go back to a state of nature, where to all, and as I said in one church service, if people begin to pick and choose which laws they would obey and which ones they wouldn't, then they would have no need even for the Ten Commandments. Because the Ten Commandments mostly gear towards restraining individual behavior. We can't have a society where people That's an aberration in any decent society. Everywhere. As they say, we have a quote that order is the first law in heaven. Order is the first law in heaven. And so today, as we celebrate our armed forces, both those dead and living, we want to remind the entire citizenry that we can make their job easier by each of us resorting to what I call responsible citizen. Responsible citizenship be the change that you want to see if you see something say something you make their job easier and also we show empathy and understanding to the members of the armed forces when you see them at those checkpoints they are there for you imagine yourself standing under that sun and under the rain from morning till night show some empathy show some understanding they are not you are enemies, they are our friends, they are our brothers, they are there to protect each and every one of us. The members of the armed forces also have blood flowing in their body. So, I dare say to say, armed forces, I we urge you never to relent, to continue to do your utmost best, to keep our country secured, and to enforce law and order, the utmost professionalism, candor, and sometimes compassion as well, we we'll urge the general citizenry that it is our job. It is also our job. If everybody asks, what have I done today to keep our state more secured and to ensure law and order, 
you obey the traffic, you will not get them. You obey the signs that the, the rules, you obey the laws, you will not will have, will have a society where everybody is happy and there is no harassment and so on and so forth. So, it's a collective action, it's a call for collective action towards the security law and order of our nation and of our state. And with this, I want to say the members of our armed forces once more, we will never take your efforts and sacrifices for granted. We will not. Anambra State Government will not. Anambra people will not. And together, together, we'll build that livable and prosperous homeland that is secure. A state where you have security, law, and order as a foundation of society. Thank you very much, and happy Armed Forces Remembrance Day. I want to wish all of you well, and may we then have the rest of the day. Thank you, and God bless you. To march off the colors. The marching, of, the marching off of the colors will symbolize the end of today's armed forces celebration and remembrance day. May I have your permission to march out the colors and the rest of the parade, Your Excellency. The reviewing officer has just granted the permission for the colors to march off the parade. Shall we all rise as the colors march off the parade? Uh, 
Uh, my name is uh, Second Lieutenant Mike Okafo, the Nigerian Living. Uh, we thank God for keeping us alive, for making it a successful and for this Remembrance Day. It's not easy for God to keep us alive to this day, to witness 2024 and for this Remembrance Day. Today is the 15th of uh, January 2024. If you can see behind, you can see our clergies. They are very, very happy. And we're also much happy and grateful to the kind of governor he gave to us, uh, the independent of uh, Professor Charles Soludo, for the peace that we have been enjoying in Anambara State. At least for now, all of us can uh, sleep with our two eyes closed in the state. We thank God for the atmosphere of Anambra State. Anambra State is very, very safe and cool this period.